because there is nothing legendary about biological men spiking women in the face with a volleyball. Did you notice a difference on the court in Blair's play versus the other girls? Oh, 100%. Some of you may be aware of the issue, others may not. Well, again, some people probably know why, while others, those who have not bothered to read at least one headline in recent weeks, don't understand what the fuss is about. So, for context, San Jose State's Blair Fleming is receiving flack after it came to light that she is a transgender player. It didn't matter to haters that she set the school record with 30 kills in a match and single season record with 266 kills in high school, or that she was named Mountain West Offensive Player of the Week in 2022. What people are focused on is the fact that she lied, a lie by omission by the way, that she is not born a female and yet pursuing a career in women's volleyball. To this day, more than a handful of teams have forfeited a match against San Jose State for that reason. Once the rumor mill started running, the schools playing San Jose State had two choices, either play in risky and unfair matches or forfeit. Note, however, that each forfeit would be recorded as a loss. A non-conference school, Southern Utah, was the first to brave the penalty and stand up for fairness and safety in NCAA women's volleyball. They were followed in succession by three schools in the conference, Boise State, Wyoming, and Utah State. All accepted the penalty as the price worth paying to make this stand. Boise State announced the forfeiture of the match with San Jose State on the school's athletics website without offering a specific reason. Boise State Volleyball will not play its scheduled match at San Jose State, read the statement. Per Mountain West Conference policy, the conference will record the match as a forfeit and a loss for Boise State. Riley Gaines, a critic of trans athletes in women's sports, said in a statement, I commend Boise State's athletic department and everyone involved in the decision to forfeit their match against undefeated San Jose State, Gaines wrote. Some principles transcend winning on the court, and the safety and well-being of female athletes is one of them. The American former competitive swimmer and political activist added that it is encouraging to witness a growing number of institutions prioritizing fairness and athlete safety over forced inclusion. I hope to see more universities follow the lead of Boise State and Southern Utah, standing up for what's right and protecting the integrity of women's sports, she further stated. Gaines stopped short of citing any specific safety concerns. The University of Wyoming women's volleyball team became the third in the nation to forfeit a game to San Jose State this season. Wyoming joined Boise State and Southern Utah, all of which did not give a specific reason for the forfeit. Idaho Governor Brad Little also joined the conversation, posting to X that he applauded Boise State's decision. We need to ensure player safety for all of our female athletes and continue the fight for fairness in women's sports, said Governor Little. The Nevada women's volleyball team apparently agrees. Despite pressure from the University of Nevada Athletics Administration, the volleyball team stuck to its guns and refused to compete against San Jose State due to the presence of transgender player Blair Fleming. While the school said the match would not be forfeited, all the Nevada players declined to show up at the contest and thus it was ultimately forfeited following a venue change. However, the team held a vote among players and voted to forfeit a late October match against San Jose State. Unsurprisingly, the San Jose State women's volleyball team has become the target of attacks from conservative media amid a lawsuit over a player's gender. The lawsuit, filed in the U.S. District Court in Atlanta, challenges the NCAA's Title IX protections regarding transgender athletes in women's sports. You should know that the NCAA first adopted a policy governing transgender athlete participation in 2010, providing a pathway to participation for transgender women and men in accordance with their gender identities. It revised that policy on January 19, 2022, to a sport-specific approach. The NCAA currently requires transgender women wanting to compete in women's sports to submit documentation, including testosterone levels, to the NCAA Committee on Competitive Safeguards and Medical Aspects of Sports, 
The committee's medical panel decides eligibility. College sports are the premier stage for women's sports in America, and the NCIA will continue to promote Title IX, make unprecedented investments in women's sports, and ensure fair competition for all student-athletes in all NCAA championships. The NCAA said in a statement, to better understand, Title IX of the Education Amendments Act of 1972 is a federal law that states no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Just so it's clear, athletics programs are considered educational programs and activities. Despite the lawsuit, Fleming and the SJSU women's volleyball team continued to battle opponents who braved the competition. In fact, the San Jose State Spartans women's volleyball team recently cruised to a three, one victory over the New Mexico Lobos. Blair Fleming, the player in the midst of the controversy, led the way with 18 kills in the match. Brooke Bryant added 14, while Ida Coker, Emma Testi, and Brooke Slusser each had nine. Now here's the thing. One of Fleming's kills in the third set raised eyebrows on social media. The Spartans were leading 13 to 11 at the point in the set when the two teams put together a nice rally. San Jose State set Fleming up for the spike, and she nailed one down off of the Lobos' libero. The ball appeared to either go off of the Lobos player's face or chest. The momentum took her backwards, and she fell to the ground. The point went to the Spartans. As can be expected, especially in light of the issue, the play raised eyebrows on social media. Beth Bourne, one of the many who shared clips of the play, wrote in a tweet, Sorry to the women of at UNM Lobo VB who were overpowered by a male-led team. Nothing about tonight's game was fair or safe. Riley Gaines, too, shared the clip with the caption, If you're wondering why teams are forfeiting against SJSU, here's the reason. She added, Another woman was smashed in the face by a kill from a man posing as a woman. It's unfair, unsafe, and regressive. Yet our leaders remain silent. Notice how she said another woman? It can be noted that before that, a similar play against San Diego State garnered attention. After it appeared Fleming's spike nailed an opponent in the face. However, San Diego State has since clarified that was not the case. One would tend to wonder though, are these women's fears completely unfounded? Well, people's opinions are divided, but it's pretty interesting that even Caitlyn Jenner, former male Olympian, now transgender woman, has spoken out about the matter, albeit referring to a different athlete at the time. I've said from the beginning, biological boys should not be playing in women's sports. We need to protect women's sports, Jenner said in an interview. As you know, she's not alone in this fight. In an article released by Forbes, they stated that fair competition is why separate women's sports were created in the first place. Competitive sport is ultimately a physical test in which post-puberty males possess significant advantages. Emphasis on the advantages, which are brought solely by genetics. What's the point, you may ask? Performance advantages, including musculoskeletal features and lung capacity, persist even after transgender women suppress testosterone levels or surgically change their bodies. Here's what you should know about other athletes.